Good morning and welcome back to Let's Clone. My name would be Steven French and I tried to make this earlier but uh my audio fucked up so yeah. Good old me, same old problems as before. I'm creating a new project. I've been playing a bit of a uh, Survivor IO and it's it's a it's a pretty good time. Um so yeah we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna create a folder, we're gonna call it Survivor. See I got this one here. Can I delete from here? Nah. Uh, so we're just going to call some survivor and we select current bang. All right. So I don't think I'm going to go too far with cloning out this game. It's not like a proper tutorial, but I just wanted to make a mobile joystick interface. And I think that survivor IO fun game as it is, they, they missed out on dodge rolls. Like you know, just any, just add that and any game could be better. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to start off making a file for my scenes. Let's get a folder for my scripts, and then we'll get a folder for some assets. Might not touch that, might touch it, who knows. Uh, we'll create a new scene, we're going to call it The Game. And it's a no 2D, call it Game. I'm going to save this as the currently selected. Oh, hold up, hold up. You got to... We'll, we'll control S for a save. Now I'm going to make this the current scene. Okay. Project settings. I'm going to go to my window size. I want to make this like a, a pseudo phone thing. So we're just going to make a, a vertical boy there. Yeah, there you go. Uh, we're going to pop this open. We're going to create a new scene. Let's make a gosh darn joystick. Out of no 2D. Well, I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but I'm not going to do it that way. Our project settings. I will scroll on down to input device pointing and enable or emulate touch for mouse. That's again, idea mobile in mind. Um, yeah, let's start here. Now, if we press play, that's going to play the the game object. And if uh, if we press this one, it's just going to play the current scene. So we're going we're gonna to use that button. We're going to add us a script. We're going to change this over to scripts, creating that script. And okay, we got a bunch to do. So I'm going to make uh, a, I'm going to call it origin. This is going to be the default position for the joystick, but it snaps back after we play with it. Uh, this is going to be equal to a vector two, which I spelled with an A for some. Silly, silly reason. I'm going to put this like 150 pixels in and 450 pixels down. Uh, we're going to make a touch vector, which will be the origin. And we're going to make a um, stick vector, which can be equal to origin as well. So, what do we want to do? Well, one thing that we want is to get rid of some of this hoopla. To read this stuff every time, probably don't even need the ready. But we're gonna come down here. We're gonna funk us up the draw method. In this here draw method, let's get a color. Get a color one 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 zero point five. So that is a red, green, and blue values of one at half opacity. So it's nice white. We're gonna give it a radius of let's say a hondo. And we will draw a circle for first our touch. We're going to draw it at this radius and we're going to draw it at this color. Um, give this a little flappy flappy in here for the stick and the radius divided by two. Let's just check that out. If we play this here scene, look, joystick pretty much done. We have recreated the iPod touch. Um, yeah, but if we play this place, the game object, and then there's nothing there. So let's tackle that real quick. If we come to the game, we're looking at it. There's nothing there. We take our joystick. We slap her into the game, and now it works. So we can use whichever plus button we want. Let's close this. It's empty. Let's go over to the joystick. Get back into our scripticals. Now, let's see what kind of stuff we want. We would like a function. Or our inputs and pass in an event argument. 
And we will see if the bent is uh, no, the input touch event screen or input event touch screen shitty. And we say if event uh, no, we'll say if event dot press. Let's just say print pressed. That sounds good enough. We'll say if event no if bang event dot pressed. Uh, then we will print a release, sure, why not? And then if we back out one, make an if event is input event screen drag, and print drag. Now let's come up here, press the little play, see what happens. So in our console, if I click, we're pressed. If I release, we release. And then if I drag, we drag. We got most of the things that we need to be done. Uh, what I would like now, whenever we hit that press button, so once we press it, I want to make the touch and the spit equal to the event position. So wherever we press. Uh, now, when I want. On the release, I'm going to say that touch is go to origin, and stick is go to origin. Let's see what that does. So, oh, that does nothing. So we would like to update all this jazz afterwards. Okay, it's so now similar to how we did in a survivor game. You kind of walk from anywhere. It's looking decent. Looking decent. Let's uh, while we're dragging around. Now we need to move the stick. So we will we will say that stick is equal to event position. What's that going to do for us? That is almost good. But I like when the the thumbstick that like hits the threshold, like it limits out and it doesn't it doesn't go much further. So I, I like when that happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to say touch minus touch minus event position. Um, I don't think I need to actually. Yeah, dot limit length to 100. Same, we'll use, yeah, same as our radius. Uh, expected a thing or a thing. I don't think I need those things, so we'll do that. Let's see if this works. Yeah. So if you don't know how vector math works, the, the documentation explains it decently well. But we have three potential origin positions, or three potential vectors. We have the origin, which is always set to this 150, 450. We have the touch, which is the touch and the stick are both sent to on that press event. And then the stick gets pulled around by us. Now, if we take touch, now we have touch event is a big circle, stick event is when I'm dragging around and where the current mouse currently is, and origin is back down on the bottom. So if we take touch and we subtract event position, that's big circle, subtract little circle, that'll give us a line going in the opposite direction. And then if we take that touch and then we subtract that opposite direction, it'll it'll just put us back in line with where our event position is. And then uh, dot length, that just sets a limit so it can't go more than 100 pixels away from that, that new center, that touch position. So, uh, yeah, it just kind of traps us in there. I like it. You don't gotta like it. I like it. So let's see. What can we do now? We could probably, we could probably make a signal and pass a move vector. And in our process here, we could, we could probably emit that signal. Um, move vector. I don't know why it's got to be string. I don't really like that. We're going to pass a, a vector. It's called move. Move, we're going to do a dot. Normalized. Yeah. Um, kind of delta. What will that do for us? Let's, let's make that vector first. So let's variable move. Is equal to vector two zero zero. Um, 
Yep, that solves that. And we're just going to say, for now, uh, move.x is equal to 10. And it actually doesn't matter if it's a 10 or a 1, it's going to be turned into a 1 when we run that normalize. I will say move.x is equal to 0. That's not going to do anything yet. We need something to receive this emitted signal. So let's come back to our game. Actually, let's go back to our scenes. Create a new scene. It's going to be a player. 2D. Get the player. This player is going to be getting sprite. I'm just going to drag this icon up to. Why not make it a texture? Uh, this player is going to have an area 2D, which is going to have a collision shape 2D. And then we're going to give that shape a rectangle. We're going to zoom on in. I'm going to hold the young alt button. Just shape this fish out. Oh, no, oh, come on. I want to hold alt and yeah, there we go. This is good enough. It's good enough for me. Um, player, we're also going to give a script. Uh, we're going to say, oh, let's save it, but he's got a script. Uh, let's come into our game world. Let's look at this here player. Let's plop him into the game world. Uh, let's view our game world. We got a little player. We'll take him. We'll just put him somewhere for now. Load this up. We got a thumbstick and we got a player, buddy. We're pretty much done. Um, let's see what I want to do. I want the player to move. So on joystick, if we go to node, we created this move vector uh, out of the, the joystick.gt. So I'm going to connect it to our player. That's going to give us a new function inside of the player that we'll call on input. Here we are, we are in the player script on input. It receives something. Let's call it input. And that something is what we, in the joystick, we set it to X on touch and uh, zero on release. So input, we're just going to say that the position of the player plus equals the input. That's not, it's not good, but it'll work. And he's crawling because we normalized it, and that set it to one. So it's, it's moving at, uh, yeah, it's moving at one times delta, which is a super small number. So he's, he's itty bitty. We're gonna say variable speed is equal to, let's say 75. And we're gonna multiply the input by our speed. So now on press, he'll start moving to the right. On release, he's gonna stop. Obviously, that's not what we want. We want him to move in the direction of the joystick. So in the joystick, while we're dragging, this is where we want to figure out where our move is. So on release, we do actually want move. We're going to set it equal to vector 2, 0, 0, because it's going to stop whenever we lift up. We don't need to do anything here. But here, we're going to set move equal to, and let's see, we want, I guess, like a stick minus touch. Right? So we're going to normalize it after, so let's see what that does. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at this. Look how freaking cute this guy is. He's moving. We're going around. Yeah. Yeah. We can, we can move it up here. Oh, we can hide it. All right, so we got a guy. He's moving around. What what should we do? Uh, that's probably good. I think, I think that's what we're going to do for now. Yeah, a little joystick. I'll make little little parts of this. Why not? It could be fun. Godot's, Godot's a good time. If you, if, if you know Godot, give me some advice, because I, I don't know this shit very well. Yeah, so I've got a couple ideas for this here, this here little clone. I don't want to go like super far to make it. This is a project to help me get more familiar with Godot. But I want to add some dodge rolls. I want to add tap to attack, which... Like if we just pay attention to how far we've dragged our thumb by the time we release, if it hasn't dragged at all, then you can we can emit something from there. Uh, yeah, dodge rolls, maybe some melee swings. Um, yeah, a little, little shmup. Why not? Follow along if you feel like following along. My name would be Stephen French, and this is Let's Clown. Peace.